My name is Space Cow, and it seems like I have been flying through this galaxy longer than I have even been alive. Day after day of the bleak nothingness of space, no one to talk to, no one to look forward to, and no one to miss me, an outcast from my world. Just because I am a cow that managed to walk on two legs and have intergalactic adventures. All the humans wanted me for was my milk, and damn it, they aren't gonna get it. My precious milk that fuels my space cruiser, not only mine, but every spaceship in the galaxy, the humans didn't know anything. It almost makes me laugh when I think that they have so much milk on Earth, and all they do with it is drink it, maybe pour it in their tea, add it to a prepackaged mixture and make pudding, but they don't know the galactic power of milk. But they weren't the only ones who wanted my milk. The outer space bandits, known as the milk stealers, always on my tail, trying to steal my milk. They sell it to the other space pirates and use the money for God knows what. It is all very secretive on the milk stealer planet. No one has ever gone there. Maybe no one ever will. Rumor has it that the milk stealers use the money to throw lavish parties, swimming pools full of milk, and baskets of clam chowder in everyone's driveway. It's sick, I tell you. The only friend I have is Space Cat. The only friend I want to have. No one is to be trusted out here in the outer depths of space. I only trust Space Cat because she was a prisoner when I met her. She understands confinement. She is humble and knows about being loyal to your friends. She was captured many years ago by a ravenous bunch of scum, the galactic space Nazis from the third moon of El Pancos. Sick bastards. The kind of sick bastards that don't even care about milk. They are beyond that kind of material evil. And one day, I will go back there and make them suffer for the things they did to Space Cat, my only friend. Oh, Jesus. Looks like a milk stealer is on my tail again. that noise. That was a little too close. Space Cat, no! Oh no! The blast has sent my melt cruiser out of control. I am gonna crash to my doom on that planet below. Yeah.
Well, children, there is one thing. Is it candy? No. Is it a puppy? No. Is it a pill? No, not a pill, Billy. Something much more wonderful. No, Billy. It's a rubber ball. Wow! Look, Billy, we can play with it. The world seems a lot better when you have a rubber ball. Space Cat, it looks as though I'm going to have to find someone to help me fix up the old milk cruiser. There's that cow that crashed onto the planet. It's despicable the way cows go around causing fires. When I was young, there was no cows from outer space. My cousin was a cow, but she wasn't from the stars like this cow. I sure hope that cow doesn't go into the pet shop to find someone to help her fix that spaceship. Space Cat, did you hear someone say something about a pet shop where we can find a mechanic? Ah! There's the pet shop, right there. No one here at all, Space Cat. Looks like this pet shop closed a long time ago. And no mechanics anywhere. Wait a minute. Let's see what's behind that door. Hey, you cow. What do you think you are doing here? You haven't come to break up my cockfight business, have you? Well, I came here looking for a mechanic, but I honestly don't think I would feel right letting this cruel cockfighting go on any longer. Now, does anyone else think they will be doing any cockfighting anytime soon?
So, is that your rooster? Yeah. I have been looking for little Reinhold here for ages. I assume he got birdnapped by that awful cockfighting gang. Well, he did. But I have set him free and put an end to that dreadful cockfighting gang for good. Thank goodness. My name is Oily Jim. Is there anything I can do to repay you? You name it. Oily Jim, hey? You wouldn't be a mechanic, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Having trouble with your ship? You could say that. as I go on another exciting space adventure. My name is Space Cow. After the recent downfall of the sinister cockfighting gang, my life has been turned upside down. The people of that odd little planet have hailed me as some sort of a hero. I'm not a hero. The real heroes are the firefighters and policemen, the people at the movie theater who clean up the popcorn after a show, but not me. I only did what I couldn't help but do shoot an alien who is jeopardizing the lives of innocent roosters for his own sick pleasure and profit. At any rate, my face had become plastered all over every newspaper and tabloid on the planet by the next morning. As soon as Oily Jim finished fixing the amazing milk cruiser, we were on our way. Out in the galaxy again, alone and free. Or were we? You see, my fame had spread far beyond that small planet with the cockfighting problems, and though I have never made many friends out here in the galaxy, my enemies were many, and now they knew exactly where I was, all thanks to that planet of gossip. And now here I am, my tiny space cruiser face to face with an entire fleet of bubble ships. These particular bubble ships were being leased by the atomic underwater space wolves from planet Vinicio. Underwater wolves, for short. And these wolves were none too happy about me. Several years ago, I toppled their evil underwater empire and stopped the entire pack from eating the whole population of Aqua Sheep Valley. Yes, these wolves had it out for Space Cow. And right now, I wish that wasn't me. We have found you at last, 
space camp, using nothing but our quick wit and the sonar devices implanted in our noses, prepared to die. I apologize, Mr. Wolf, but the only animal dying today will be you. I have seen the vengeance you rain down upon the Aqua Animal Kingdom, and damn it, it's not right. <laughs> oh, space cow, I am a fair and just king to these pathetic creatures. If you don't see the true meaning of the nightmare of Gilchano, this is no longer my problem. Underwater Wolf King out. <laughs> No, Space Cat. I don't know what he means by that either. I don't know how I will get out of this one, Space Cat. Good plan, Space Cat. Get in the back and start firing the Space Cannon. Planet Venetio is coming up fast. It looks like they chased us here on purpose. Yes, Space Cow. Now prepare for your ultimate doom. Space Cat, we are headed straight for Planet Venetio, and I can't control the ship. Today's Space Cow sure is exciting. Sure is, Hank. I don't know how Space Cow is going to get out of this jam. Well, I don't know either. But all you kids out there better keep watching to find out. I bet you don't know what happened to me today, Hank. No, Gerald. Why don't you tell me? Well, when I came home from lunch today, my mom asked me to go to the... What did you need at the store to make your lunch? Well, when I got there, I had to buy bread. Butter, cheese, and milk. Wow! Did you do it all by yourself? Well, my mother made a list for me. So, how many things did you buy? Let me think. Bread is one, butter is two, cheese is three, and milk makes four. Four things in total. And what number do you get when you add everything together? Well, let me see. Bread plus butter plus cheese plus milk equals ten. Ten is the answer. And if you take ten and add it to the other numbers, times together and divide that by milk, what do you have? Hank. Everyone knows that is eight and a half. Right. But what if you take eight and a half, feed it to milk, and use the bread and cheese to make your dinner instead of your lunch? Do you really want to know? Yeah! Of course I do! He really wants to know. Let's show him. cheese to make your dinner instead of your lunch. Don't we, Captain Black Ears?
Forget about it, you insane underwater wolf. I might still have a few tricks up my space sleeve yet. No, I don't think so. This time you have lost, space cow. I'm not sure what they plan to do to us, Space Cat, but you don't have to worry about a thing. These vicious underwater wolves are evil, and evil never wins, Space Cat. Not while I'm on the job. Besides, I have an amazing space plan to unhatch. Without Space Cat in the way, we could dominate the whole underwater world, and every world beyond ours too. Which is Gil Charno. So what is that, exactly? It is ancient, and not to be spoken of. Told you I had a plan, Space Cat. Now come with me. Time to put Phase 2 into effect. Your Majesty, Space Cat has escaped. Did you fools! How could you let this happen? Not only has she escaped, but she has freed all the seahorses from our seahorse glue factory. <laughs> fools! I will deal with this myself. Damn you, Space Cow! What do you think you are doing now? Oh, you underwater wolves! Grinding up seahorses to make your special glue that you sell to every corner of the galaxy, and you never even knew the seahorse song. Seahorse song? What I'm talking about? Oh, never mind. No, please, tell me. Let me hear it. Well, okay, I guess so. Let him hear it, Mademoiselle Seahorse. Well, I guess he's just not a music lover. Exciting space adventure. Billy? Billy? Oh, there you are. Don't want to eat your breakfast? Uh-uh. Is it a little boring? Uh-huh. Well, you better look up in the sky, Billy, because something special is coming your way. Make Space Cow Cereal a healthy part of your balanced breakfast. 100% Space Cow Approved. So here we are, me and my companion, Space Cat, full circle and back, 
on the treacherous third moon of El Pencos, full circle. Last time I was here, I met my dearest friend, Space Cat. And now I am back to rain down revenge upon my oldest and my bitter enemy, Captain Huzzy Slugger, the leader of the most vile group of intergalactic scum that ever lived, the galactic space Nazis. They used the good people of this moon to do backbreaking labor in the Nazi mines of St. Hungenberg. They take women, children, anyone they can to do their sick work, even cats. In the mines, the prisoners are hooked up to machines that force their free will away and render them as helpless zombies with only work on their mind. They mine for intergalactic Nazi gold, gold that Captain Huzzy Slugger uses to build giant statues of himself. The people who refuse to do the work are murdered. Last time I was here, I could only free my friend, Space Cat. This time, I plan on freeing the entire planet from this disgusting oppression. <coughs> yes, Space Cat, I see that we have arrived. And behind this door should be the living chambers of Captain Huzzy Slugger. Once we get rid of him, it will be easy to put an end to this barbarism. <coughs> now watch your eyes, Space Cat. I am going to use the electro laseroid to burn through this door. I can't believe he isn't here, Space Cat. I was sure my plan was airtight. What is this? A note? Dear Space Cow, my intelligence informed me of your impending arrival and assassination attempt. I have instead decided to live. You won't get out of the bunker alive. But I hope you take solace in the fact that your friend Space Cat will not meet the same fate as you. Yours truly, Captain Huzzy Slugger. I wonder what he means by that, Space Cat. Hey, cow! Put your hands in the air and come with us! Hey, easy guys. There's no need for violence. That's enough small talk, you filthy cow! Now move! Hey, what are you doing? Looks like I am out of space ammo. I guess I have to do this the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Looks like they are gonna nap for a while. Time to find Space Cat. Yes, Space Cat, you were my favorite of all the slaves. And now that I have you back, I will once again turn you into a zombie. And yet you'd use your special skills to get the gold from the hard spots where the human hands can't reach. And then, when I have enough gold, I will rule the entire galaxy! <laughs> Wanda Whitford was sent to bed without the luxury of supper. She was upset and decided to get back at her parents by playing with the forbidden Ouija board that she kept under her bed. 
even though her parents told her to throw it away a long time ago. The night grew darker and colder and Wanda asked her questions. The board spelled out the letters H A N K. Hello, Hank. Are you a happy girl? The board moves to no. The wind grew stronger and colder, and no one really knows what happened after that point. But Wanda was never seen again. Some eyewitness sources say it went something like this. Hi, Wanda! Let this be a lesson to all you children out there. The dark arts are no place for the untrained mind. And as always, you should obey your parents' wishes. Till next time, I am Dodgy Trade Zagler, bidding you farewell from Tales of the Unknown. Control everyone's mind works fine for most, and the ones it doesn't work on are destroyed. But you are different, Space Cat, and for you, I will make the process of turning you into a zombie permanent, and I will inject you with special chemicals and make you my slave forever! I only have to wait for the zombie transformation chemicals to be properly prepared! And then your soul is mine, Space Cat! Enjoy your next few hours, because after that, you will be under my control! <laughs> I can't seem to pick up Space Cat's signal at all. I guess I'd better go back down to the planet and search for her the old-fashioned way. Darn it. Looks like I have company. But this should only take a moment. Space cow, surrender your ship or I will be forced to shoot you down. Not today, you Nazi scum. I won't let Space Cat down. I can't. Listen, you Nazi creep. 
Tell me where I can find Captain Huzzy Slugger, or I swear your head will be as bad off as your legs. Please, no. He's in the laboratory. Third door down, and on your left, he has your cat, too. Thanks a lot. Captain Huzzy Slugger. Space go! You didn't really think you would get away with turning my best friend into a zombie, did you? Space go! Prepare to meet your maker, Captain Psycho. Hiya! Captain Lunatic, you have just made me more angry. (laughs) And now to save the whole planet from this insane band of space Nazis. Well, Space Cat, it looks like everything on the third moon of El Pancos will be okay now. You're right, Space Cat. I did go a little overboard killing that vile creep, Captain Huzzy Slugger. But let's face it, he probably deserved worse. <laughs> Remember kids, you can't rule the galaxy by making giant golden statues of yourself. Do you hear what they said about Space Cow, Gerald? Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, really. I'm gonna miss watching that cow every week. It's more than that, Gerald. It's total bullshit. Good evening, and welcome to a very special episode of House of the Uncanny. I am Nathaniel Weisberg. Tonight, we will get to witness for the very first time anywhere the mysterious, lost third episode of the cartoon program, Space Cow. Over the years, there have been numerous legends and wild hypotheses connected to the network's reason behind not showing the third episode of Space Cow. One legend goes as such. The actual reel of film was possessed. And in the studio, after the episode was complete, in the screening room, 
everyone who watched that episode died mysteriously within the next few days. We here at House of the Uncanny have decided to take our chances and broadcast this episode for the very first time. I myself watched the episode late last night. I found this episode to be quite different and possibly the most disturbing thing I have ever seen in my life. You be the judge. Now sit back and enjoy as the mysterious lost third episode of Space Cow is revealed to you for the very first time. May God have mercy on your soul. It will be a few days before I will be able to fix your ship up properly, Miss Cow. That's okay, Oily Jim. I'm sure me and Space Cat can find something interesting to do here on the planet of gossip. Be careful, Space Cow. This planet can sometimes be full of mystery and doom. Space Cat, shall we take a walk and see if there is anything going on in this town? We could certainly use a couple days vacation. I wonder what Oily Jim meant when he said this planet was full of mystery and doom. Oh well. The hot sun beating down on us is a nice change from the cold vastness of space. Look, Space Cat! There seems to be a tent over there. Let's go check it out! Hello, my new friend the cow! Have you come to ask Madame Barco to tell your friend? Well, sure. Sounds good for a laugh. Well, my adventurous cow, come sit. Come sit down at the mysterious table of Madame Barco. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I see something, something in the near future, something. This is getting a little creepy, Madam Barco. Something. You haven't begun to see creepy space cow. <laughs> out of his jam. She always does. I want to sing the ABC song! I want to sing the ABC song! I want to sing the ABC song! Fine. 
Ashtray, Ashtray Ballet Shoot, Carnival, Dairy Car, Elephant Man, Fish Filet, Guillotine, Hammerhead Shark, Ice Cream Man, Jack and Kirk, Lightning Rod, Missile Head, Nose, Ostrich, Pterodactyl, Quantum Teleportation, Radishes, Soup of the Day, Television Set, Unicorn, Vivisection, Walrus, Zerus, Yellow Bean, Zeppelin, those are my ABCs, those are my ABCs. ABCs sure are fun, Gerald. They sure are, Hank. They sure are. Where am I? This doesn't seem real, but it must be. Can't move my arms. Can't move anything. You will never escape the dimension of Vulmisiad. You are my prisoner forever. I must find a way out of this madness. I should be dead, and the pain is unbelievable. But I keep living. What is going on? I don't need to tell you again, Space Cow. You will never be able to use your head again. Without your quick thinking, I would have been in crazy land forever. 
Perhaps I will tell you what happened one day. But right now, I am really craving a big piece of scorpion pie. <laughs> Now that you have witnessed the truth, be safe and don't stray from the path on your way home from House of the Uncanny. Until next time, I am Nathaniel Weisberg. <laughs>